Beloved brothers and sisters, oh, my heart is full of joy. And coming to this point in time, this is November 2021 about to come to an end. And the Lord has kept you. The Lord has kept me. It is a joyous thing. So what we want to do today and for some time this period will be to pray more. So we want to take a reflection at the journey the Lord has taken us so far. So I title this sessions, Our Spiritual Journey, Our Spiritual Journey this year, 2021. So you can start by saying, Our Spiritual Journey in 2021. So Our Spiritual Journey in 2021. How far have we gone this year? How far have you come this year. We're just starting today, so we're not going to look at everything. We'll just pick some key actions that we were supposed to take during the year and see how far we have implemented those actions and what, where we are or what else we need to do. But before we go too far, let's remind ourselves that our theme for this month remains our month of abundant life. Praise the Lord. Open your Bible with me to John chapter 10, verse 10b. John chapter 10, verse 10b. And I believe you can recite it by heart by now. So let's say it together. I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. This is the word of Jesus Christ, our master, to us. And let's put our faith in this word because indeed Jesus has come that we may have life and have it more abundantly. Remember in 1 John chapter 5, verse 11. 1 John chapter 5, verse 11. There the Bible says that this is the testimony that God has given us eternal life and this life is in his son. He that has the son has life. He that does not have the Son of God does not have life. So Jesus, God has given us eternal life through his Son, Jesus Christ. And here Jesus declared to the disciples, and this word is applicable to us today. I have come that they may have life and have it more abundantly. If you look at verse 11, there you say, I am the good shepherd, the good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. He is the shepherd, we are the sheep. To the extent that he gives his life for us. It is no secret that Jesus Christ came into this world and has done exactly what he said here. He has died for you and me and therefore has become our good shepherd, our great shepherd that guides our life. And he says, fear not, little flock, fear not, for it is your father's will to give you the kingdom. So no matter what you're going through, no matter what you feel, know that the good shepherd is with you. He is the great shepherd of the sheep. Glory be to God. And he has promised you, promised me, abundant life, abundant peace, abundant joy abundant prosperity, abundant blessing, all that are entailed in the eternal life package. Glory be to God. So now let's uh, look at the journey, our spiritual journey in 2021. Let's set the context. Open your Bible with me to Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2. Hebrews chapter 12. Verse 2, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and I sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. I want us to read both verses, verses 1 and 2 again together. Read it with me, please. Therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us, 
and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. The race that is set before us. Beloved, the year 2021 has been a race, and actually life as a whole is a race. That's why we said our spiritual journey in 2021. We will continue to also look at 2022. Life is a race. Life is a journey. So we want to look at our journey so far in 2021. The things God has helped us to understand by his spirit that we should do that will help us. How far have we gone? What have we done and what is still remaining to be done? That's the season, that's the period, that's the time. So we can do those things. Like the Bible says, Lord, teach us how to number our years, that we may apply our hearts to wisdom. So it says, let us lay aside the weights. So what are those weights? Don't let the weights stop you from doing what you are supposed to do this year. What are the sins that ensnares? Don't let those sins ensnare you. You have to overcome them. But what are we to do? Let us run with endurance, that is with patience. Run with patience. So keep moving, keep moving, keep doing something. There is a popular quotation which uh, that if you cannot fly, you should run. If you cannot run, you should walk. If you cannot walk, you should crawl. But just make sure you are doing something. I think that was... Uh, um, a speech by Martin Luther King Jr. Brethren, doing something, taking action is the key. I've said it several times and I want to say it again. And I, I hope the spirit makes it to stick. That if you don't do something, if I don't do something, if we don't do something about our lives, hear me and hear me clearly, God will do nothing. It doesn't matter how much grace you hear and talk and confess. If you don't do something, God will do nothing. So begin to do something. Even like David, who went to battle against a giant, an experienced warrior, but he had to do something. He carried a sling and stones, and he made sure he threw it. Let God act. That is how to activate God. Move God into action by showing our faith in him and our belief in him by doing something. So here, the Bible says we should put aside everything that is a hindrance. Summarize it. Everything that is a hindrance. Whatever is a hindrance. Whatever is hindering you from doing what you're supposed to do in this year 2021. And beyond whatever you're supposed to do for your life, don't sit down and wish. Wishes are not, you know, they say if wishes were horses, beggars will ride. So wishes can never become horses. Verse 2 of the scripture. So it says, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Now, how do we run? Why we run with this patience? What do we do? He said, looking unto Jesus. This scripture just kept coming to my spirit, man. Looking unto Jesus. This is our singular focus, brothers and sisters, as we run each day, each week, each year, year after year. Our focus is we run the race with patience, with endurance, doing what? Looking unto Jesus. So let's read that verse 2 now that we have the clarity. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. He is the one that authors it. That's the originator. And he is the one that will make us to finish it and finish well. He is the author, the one who started it. And he is the one that finishes it. So the author and finisher of our faith. So without Jesus, brothers and sisters, we are nothing. And everything we do is empty. 
So looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. So Jesus was driven by a goal or by a purpose. And that's why we must set our goals by the help of the Spirit and the Word of God and then run this race, following through patiently. Quickly, we'll look at, we'll look at James chapter 1. Let's start reading from verse 22. James chapter 1, look at it from verse 22. He said, but be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. 23, for if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man observing his natural face in a mirror. For he observes himself, goes away, and immediately forgets what kind of man he was. 25, but he who looks into the perfect law of liberty and continues in it, continues in it, and is not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this one will be blessed in what he does. Beloved, my message is done already with these two scriptures. So that's what we're talking about. We want to review, look at what the Lord has spoken to us so far this year, the assignment, the exercises, and then what have we done so far? Because the doers, and please really note James chapter 1, verses 22 through 25 that we have read. James chapter 1, verses 22 through 25. So a number of things that uh, we have touched on, which I want to remind us. Early in the year, because this is our year of what? Greater victory. Oh, such word of faith. Our year of greater victory. Don't lose sight of that. No matter how tough the battle is, have faith in God. He will grant you victory in the name of Jesus. Because our victory or our victories are already guaranteed. First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 57 which is our text for the year. The scripture says, but thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. So early in the year, we looked at mountains of victory, mountains of victory. And we said, set your seven, at least seven mountains of victory goals for this year, 2021. Well, you can make it more, but set seven key things you're going to pursue by faith in the year 2021. We call it our Mountains of Victory Plan. I'm gonna come back to check how many of us have done that and where are you? And if you haven't done, it's never too late, you start, because you will continue to build on those plans. Number two, we came to, uh, of course, there are a number of things we have done, but let me jump to amazing possibilities. Okay, before amazing possibilities, we went on uh, a seven days fasting and prayer after the teaching on the redeemed of the Lord. Do you remember? The redeemed of the Lord. And we put together powerful prayer points and say, keep praying this prayer for yourself. Combine it. We actually combine it and share it. Pray for yourself. Learn how to pray. So how many of us have done that? So that's number two. Then number three, amazing possibilities. Part A, this was the exercise and assignment. Review your personal circumstances. Search the Bible for the promises of God concerning your life, concerning your life circumstances. Write down your success to change plan and set goals in the seven areas of amazing possibilities. Seven areas of amazing possibility. D, present your prayer to God continually at least three times a day, at least three times a day. E, which is 0.5, make this your life pattern for surely 
the will of God for your life will be fulfilled. In Jesus' name, amen. That was number three, amazing possibilities with, that had two parts. Part A, review your personal circumstances. So it's never too late. Search the Bible for the promises of God concerning your life circumstances. If you're feeling down, let's say you, you feel sorrowful, for example, you feel dejected, rejected, you need the comfort of the Holy Spirit. You need joy to bubble inside of you. You need fresh energy. A number of scriptures can immediately come to you, isn't it? That the Holy Spirit is your comforter. That the fruit of the Spirit includes what? Joy. Praise the name of the Lord. That Jesus, according to what uh, Paul, the apostle say, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. That Jesus also promises that those who abide in him, he said the ransom of the Lord shall come again to Zion with joy and with singing and everlasting joy upon their heads. You can, these are scriptures. These are the promises of God for you. There are many more. So whatever your circumstance, review it. Oh, thank God. Circumstances don't have to be negative only. No, no, no. Your circumstance can also be that you are aspiring to establish your own conglomerate of companies. So you can employ people and provide means of livelihood for them. That is a good thing to desire. It's God that gives us power to make wealth. You know that? Deuteronomy chapter 8, I believe uh, verse 18 of 33. We can just check that out. But you search the scripture and ask God, give me the wisdom to go about establishing this company, the strength, the know all that and put it down. But you have to walk it. So that was just example. Review your circumstances your desires, and then write down to point A was review your personal circumstances, search the Bible for the promises of God concerning your life circumstances and your desires. See, uh, I mean, uh, yes, see, write down your success to change plan and set goals in the seven areas of amazing possibilities. And you remember those seven areas, dominion and um, promises and the rest of them. D. Present in prayer to God continually at least three times a day. E, make this your life pattern. And surely the will of God for your life will be fulfilled in Jesus' name. Amen. Then part B of the um, amazing possibilities. We say learn to have a personal worship. Worship moments that you really know that you are into the holy of holies. You are in God and God is in you. So we said, worship God in spirit and truth. Set at least 30 minutes time each day. And what do you do at this time? He said, we wrote, say, from your spirit, go ahead and appreciate who God the Father is in your life. Just 30 minutes, this time is for you, time of your communion with God. This one is not the time of prayer. It's not the time of making the request. You can make the request after. But this time is for you to just commune with God. Your personal communion and fellowship, worship. So I read it again. Say, set at least 30 minutes time each day. From your spirit, go ahead and appreciate who God, the Father, is in your life. Speak to him and reverence him from your heart with your words, songs, dances, praises, thanks, and give the Father your worship. Give the Father your worship. B, within that same 30 minutes, do the same with Jesus Christ, the Son of God, your Savior, your King, your Lord, my King, my Lord. Then see, decide in your heart. So the other one, you do keep doing 30 minutes. 
for yourself, in your house, in your closet. The second part now, so both A and B are together within in the 30 minutes. Then the second part, which I call C here, decide in your heart what service, example, evangelism, giving to the needy, visit to orphans, prison, prisoners, anything the Holy Spirit puts in your mind, in your heart, that you are going to do in order to honor God as part of your worship. This is the real worship. Make this again your life pattern. When you do this, you would see nobody, you won't worry yourself about people telling you, do this, do that, because you know already, and the Spirit will be teaching you much more what you're, what you're supposed to do. So we are here to really learn the practical living of the life of a Christian, one that is like Christ. So now time to discuss. Let's start from one, which was our goals and plan for the year. What, how has it been? Because your plan may be your secret plan. You don't want to share it. So I, I, I respect that. I haven't shared mine either. Okay. But I tell you, my plans for the year have, they have been moving well. <laughs> there are still many more that I haven't been able to do. I'm asking God for grace and strength. But I do have something I'm focusing on. Something I'm working with. Glory be to God. So how have yours been. At least let's focus on these four key things that we have been taught this year, how to live a practical Christian life that produces results. So we title it our spiritual journey in 2021, and we will continue to look into 2022. Okay, discussion time. What are your reflections now on these things that I have uh, recapped for us. Have you done something? Have you not been able to do something? Um, how has it helped you? That's what we want to discuss. Or just your own learning over this year. Please feel free to share. Yes, Sonny, please go ahead. Uh, I want to start by saying that uh, I'm so much grateful to God for what he has done in my life throughout this year. Uh, the most important part of it has to do with my spiritual life. I think before I joined this uh, platform around February or March, uh, my life was not in order, if I may use that word. But by the grace of God, I have constantly be part of this teaching because I believe that the education of my spirit mind is much better than any other thing. Uh, despite the challenges. But the key thing here is that there have been remarkable improvements in my own spiritual life because the evidences are there. I experience them and I feel them. And sometimes I will ask myself if I did not just get in contact with this platform before or by this time, what would have been my life? Mm. But God had been so faithful. Uh, I cannot mention it all, but I have to really uh, thank you, Pastor, in particular, by the grace of God, because every time I discuss with you, you always lay one emphasis on the fact for me to run away from youthful sin, that God's plan for a man can never come to pass if that person is living in sin. And that had actually helped me a lot. And secondly, uh, the issue of prayers, through this teaching, you'll be able to let me know that if I should pray, that God is always available to answer prayers. And I've keyed into that principle by sometimes, you, you also also mentioned that we have to be able to get a fixed time that we always have time to pray. And so I tried to do that. There was a particular issue that always, you know, overcome me. So on a particular night, that was about two or three weeks ago, I have to fix a time with God that, God, I want to meet you by 10, 30 in the night, and I want to bring this issue to you. And by exactly 10, 30 that night, I think I was sleeping in my spirit. I, I woke, and I began to pray, and I read the Bible, talk to God. And the following day, 
And up to today, that experience, I no longer experience it. So God had done so much in my life. Despite the challenges, I want to say here that there are improvements in my life. And I may not get there yet, but Satan himself knows that there have been improvements. And God will help me the more to achieve more. Thank you very much. There is Thank something you. you have said that I really want to emphasize, because this is what we're talking about. You have taken at least one aspect of fix a time to pray, you know, and look at your life. When there are issues, don't sit down and cry. Take it to God. And God has proven himself faithful. Thank you for that uh, um, encouraging word. So, Anybody else wants to share something you have learned and you have applied? How have your plans been in this aspect? We're going to make this again available to everyone. It's never too late, especially as we want to be preparing for the year 2022. Oh, it is our year of uh, abundant life. Oh, we came from a great and greater enlightenment or great enlightenment. In 2020, with divine protection, came into a greater victory, and it's going to be our year of abundant life. Please, next person, open your line and share. How has the journey been for you this year? The plans, I've just picked uh, three or so and reminded us. It is the doers of the world that get resolved not the hearers that don't do what they hear. Practical Christian living. I know the word, I'm always very careful about the word Christianity, yeah? which has two parts, which has the religion. So I'm talking about a Christian life. So practical Christian living. That person that is like Christ mm -hmm. has been given the nature, the divine nature, the nature of God now has to walk out his salvation with fear and trembling, her salvation with fear and trembling by doing this practical things. Okay, please, next person, share something. Mountains of victory, your plan for the year, that was what we call it, your mountains of victory daily plan or mountains of victory uh, plan for the year 2021, your victory plan for the year 2021. Your amazing possibilities plan, part A, part B. This part B of determining what set a time to worship God, communion with God. Is that such a difficult thing to do 30 minutes each day? If you cannot do it each day, but well, just make sure you have a time that you do. Then the second part is very critical that you, as you do part A, which is from your heart, appreciating God and appreciating Jesus, the son of the living God, your Lord, your master, the spirit will normally speak to you, put things in your spirit. I did tell us, write those things down and take them very seriously. They may sound like, they may look like nothing. Put them down. And then part B is decide in your heart what you're going to do, what service you're going to do. I listed some example of them. Evangelism is one of them. Speaking to people about Jesus is part of your worship service. Giving to the needy is because we've never been seeing these things as a duty. That's why we just do them the way we like. It is incumbent on you. Giving to the needy, visiting the orphans or prisoners or anything else that the Holy Spirit puts in your mind, which you're going to do to honor God. It's you who decides. I will do this to honor God. This is part of your worship. Who wants to speak, please? Where are you on your plan? Or you have not been able to do anything at all. You have not been able to put this plan. You have not been able to work your plan. Please feel free. Let's discuss. What have been, if there, are, there may be challenges. All right, Sister Comfort, thank you for opening uh, the line. So go ahead. Let me see, take today as introduction so you are familiar with what we're going to be doing as we continue to go, because I don't want your year 2022 to be any less than your year 2021. That year of abundant life, 
you must explode. We must explode. All right, sister, please go ahead. Uh, thank you, Pastor, for this great opportunity. In fact, when I look at my water roots, <laughs> one of the things I, I, I wrote was my spiritual journey. So what is it? To be transformed into the image and likeness of Christ Jesus, meaning I must be filled with the spirit of God. That is the spirit of God must dwell in me, completely soaked in the spirit. If the spirit of God lives in me, I am in Christ. That is John 14, 17. Spirit of the truth that lives in me will be with me. Uh, this is how we know that we live in him and he in us. He has given us his spirit. So based on this, I then say, God, please help me to reorganize my life to be able to make this, like you have said. So, and it has been amazing. But the scripture I want us to read, I want to read is this scripture, because uh, Second Cor uh, Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11, um, in my translation, it says, in order that Satan might not outwit us, for we are not unaware of his schemes. So why am I reading this scripture? It, Satan is very crafty. Everything moves very smoothly. But like I said, I reorganized my life. I had to now with this, I've been able to say, this is what I, did, I will be able to do. The first day I did, and I said, I'm not going to tell anybody. It was me and my God. I did it so perfectly well. The second day, in fact, I, I, something happened that looks very, very, very planned and organized by God. I had somebody, we prayed together. We Then what, after this person left, what I have to do, I couldn't, I was not able to do again. I struggled to go back, I couldn't. From that time on, it's been up and down, up and down, until then my mind, keeps on becoming so unorganized, so disorganized, until I have to say, God, I know there is something my spirit is fighting, which I do not. What my spirit is fighting, God, you know, help me to understand. So please, I, that is what it might look until this thing just showed me. It looks, I say, wow, then I have to go back and retrieve my steps. And then I could see the peace of God. I could see the hands of God. Mm -hmm. So my, I want to, us to know, it might look, the, the devil is like the, his schemes. We must not be ignorant. A little mm -hmm. distraction can take us away from our plan. Let us remain focused so that God's spirit will help us to overcome our great enemy, the, the, the crafty one. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you for sharing that. So it is important for us to write down um, our, our plans. And especially when we've gone through teachings like this and we're given the um, exercise. So as I said, we're going to again share this, uh, at least as I've written it here, I will share it again on the WhatsApp. So it will help people Remember, and you go look at your notes and all that and put your plans. Look at your plans for the year 2021. And we're going to pray now about it as well. And be able to say, these were the goals I set by the grace of God. These are the things I have achieved. These are the things I have not been able to achieve. And I need God to help me. Because it is the continuity that helps. If you just keep doing and you drop, oh, I couldn't do this and you move on. If you remember one of the um, negative behaviors that hinders grace, behaviors is what? Complacency, not seeking to improve yourself. Mm -hmm. Brothers and sisters, I challenge you by the grace of God, you can be whatever. I'm not talking theory. You can be whatever you desire to be. Remember what we said. That how far you go in life and where you end in life is not the end of God. It's just Amen. how much you are willing to walk. Yes, 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 
Where you end in life is not the end of God. It's not the end of your God. It's not the limit of God's grace. God's grace has no limit. It is just how far you are willing to walk with God. That's where, why you end there. Anywhere you desire to go, God says, come. My grace is sufficient for you. So let's lift up our voices. We want to pray. We want to thank God for how far he has brought you, brought me. So pray with me and say, Heavenly Father, thank you for how far you have brought me. Lord, thank you for my plans, my goals, my desires, which I have committed to you in this year, 2021. Father, I thank you for the fulfillment of those goals, those desires. I thank you for the effort, the strength, the grace, the help you have given me. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Amen. Now, thank God also for your family because we're going to the second part. Say, Father God, I thank you for my family, for keeping my family alive, keeping my spouse, keeping my children. Lord, thank you. To you be all glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, tell him, Father God, thank you for this year. Your word to me has been that it is my year of victory, according to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 57. And Lord, I thank you for the victory I have enjoyed so far in this year. Uh, the fact that I am alive is great victory. Lord, I thank you for the victory you have given me so far. In Jesus' mighty name. Now let's expand our prayer. Say, Heavenly Father, there are, greater, there are still greater victories remaining in this year, 2021. And so, Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, give me victory in every second, in every minute, in every hour, every day, every week, for the rest of uh, November, the rest of December 2021. Give me victory, O oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Father God, my help, help me that Whatever evil determination, evil agreement, evil plot there may be in this year 2021, it shall not come near me. It shall not touch me in the mighty name of Jesus. Therefore, I declare in the name of Jesus, I have victory all through the year 2021. Year 2021, you remain my year of greater victory. I shall have victory to the end. I shall see the end of the year 2021. The year 2021 will not see my end. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Add to that and say, Heavenly Father, all my plans for the year 2021, I present to you afresh, I present to you anew. Lord, grant me victory that I will be able to fulfill all my plans, all my desires. Now go ahead and pray. Go ahead and pray and expand. That in this year, 2021, the remaining days, the remaining weeks, you will continue to enjoy greater victory. You and your family, what is that thing you desire of the Lord? It's never too late. It's never too late. The God that turned the economy of a whole nation around within 24 hours, they went from famine to um, a, a surplus, from famine, hunger to surplus. He can do it for you. He will do it for you. He will do it for me. He will do it for us. Go ahead and present your matter to God. Your desires in year 2021, they will come to fulfillment. It's never too late. It's never over until it is over. Go ahead and present those plans to him. Tell him, Father, here are my plans. Here are my desires. This is the 11th month. Oh, almost finished. I have just a few days, uh, 32, 32, 33 days, 33 days at most, with some holidays in, so far shorter than that. But God, you are the one who can turn things around, turn things around for me, even in this year. Father, the things I have not yet been able to do, now pray, supply strength, supply strength, oh God. Whatever has been the challenge, Lord, give me strength, give me strength. For some of you that have not been able to settle down to make a plan, pray now. Say, Heavenly Father, give me the grace and the strength to be able to sit down and make a plan. Help me, Holy Spirit of God, to be able to make a plan. 
And now pray with me and say, Heavenly Father, by your quickening spirit, help me to execute my plan, to carry out that plan and carry it out consistently to the end. In the name of Jesus, Father God, by your spirit, according to Romans chapter 8, verse 11. Yes, Romans chapter 8, verse 11. That's one of the scriptures. The Lord put in my spirit that we should read and pray. Father, help me, quicken me by your spirit to execute my plans for this year, 2021. Now pray this prayer because some of you, you don't even know what to plan. Some of us, let's put it that way. Say, Heavenly Father, by your spirit, help me now. Give me direction. Give me guidance on the things I should focus on for the rest of the year and for the year 2022. See, we are ahead. Father, give me guidance. I mean, guide me, guide me, guide me on the things I should focus on. Direct me. Show to me what I should work on, what I should pay attention to and work on for the remaining days of year 2021. And my plans for year 2022, Holy Spirit, guide me what I should be doing. I should plan and focus on in the year 2022. In Jesus' name, we are prayed. Now, final prayer. We will read that Romans chapter 8, verse 11. Read it with me. But if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. Raise your voices to heaven again and say, Holy Spirit of God, I surrender myself. Heavenly Father, Pour your spirit afresh upon me. Renew me. Renew your spirit in me. And now, Holy Spirit of God, in the name of Jesus, reveal the mind of Christ to me, the mind of Christ concerning my life for the year 2022. Lord, Holy Spirit of God, reveal the mind of Christ, revealed the will, the purpose, the plan of God for my life, for that year that is coming, the year 2022. Father, go ahead of me, even as we confess by faith that the year 2022 is our year of abundance. Lord, I pray that set great abundance for me and my family, set great abundance for me and my brothers and sisters. Every one of us that is connected upon this platform right now, Lord, set great abundance for us in that year 2022. Go ahead of us. Heavenly Father, the ups and downs of the year 2022 will not affect us, but we will continue to abide in Christ and our lives will shine forth. We will enjoy the great abundance, the abundant life that Jesus has given to us. Jesus has obtained for us the abundant life, Lord God Almighty, that you have given to us through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Thank you, our Lord and our God. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. And now we confess together, brothers and sisters, according to Psalm 91, verse 10. 91, verse 10, let's say it together. There shall no evil befall me, neither shall any plague come nigh my dwelling. We're going to say it three times. So the second time, there shall no evil befall me, neither shall any plague come nigh my dwelling. Again, the last time, there shall no evil befall us. Neither shall any play come near our dwelling. In the mighty name of Jesus, the almighty God keep you and your family. The spirit of God quicken you and help you to put to action all that the Lord has taught you. That you will no longer be hearers only, but you will be hearers and doers. That I will no longer be hearer only but I will be a hearer and a doer of the word of God. The blessings of the Lord be with you and manifest in your life and your family now and forevermore. Have a glorious last week of the year. I mean, of the month of November in the year 2021. And as you go into that month of December, you shall enjoy God's abundant life in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. God bless you, brothers and sisters. This is where we will close. And I look forward to meeting you on Wednesday. 
We're going to share the things I've just reminded us of, please, and we are, I've prayed. The Spirit of God will definitely help you. Just make effort. Remember, one of the positive behaviors of enjoying grace is effort, making effort. Sit down, just try. The Spirit will take over. David threw only a stone, a stone against a man that came with spears and bows and arrow and sword and all manner of things. Yet, God used that stone. It is that little effort you try to make. God will teach, help, enlarge till it becomes a mighty conglomerate. God bless you, brothers and sisters. This is where we will close. But again, I will just, because there are some people who don't like speaking when the meeting is going on. If there's anybody you see have anything you want to say or um, anything whatsoever, feel free, open the line uh, before we say bye-bye. You know, when we fight the year, you, you emphasize greatly about putting together a personal plan and something that you work along even beyond this particular year. I did write out some, some very big dreams and plans. Of course, naturally, in the course of the year, it looks like you've been hit by a truck many, many times, and then some things go off the rail, and then you're trying to, you know, pull yourself back into focus, and sometimes it doesn't work. Sometimes it's a bit more harder. And then the year is ending and you go over those things and you're tempted to really feel very bad because you look at it, it's not, you've achieved, you don't, you put effort, but that effort has not translated to the type of result that you want. And particularly, there are very obvious setbacks. So you're in that space where you've done a lot, but you can't see the results yet. And then in measuring with the goal, you're very, very far from actualizing them. Yes, we have achieved one or two. How, where do you go from there? How do you pick up strength? How do you still keep driving? Because for me as a person, I know that God is with me. Uh, some days, certain things are not clear. But when you see, I, I pray, I make, I pray about things. And in at least, Five times this year that I've been trapped in, in a, I feel like in a box situation, and I just make those prayers and I say, God, I really don't know how to do this. And it shows up. So his means is with me. So I'm not alone. So, I mean, if I doubted it, just last week here, it happened. Yesterday again, it happened. So how do you put all this together and still keep moving towards that goal? you know what mind space do you need to be you know because of course the devil is not going to relax you know but we also need to advance with steady steam how do i do that okay um yeah thanks uh, for the for sharing your testimony actually because uh, it's a testimony you have shared really so if we start from the testimony part uh, you said you have found yourself in situations where you just didn't know how you were going to move forward, right? And you cried, cried to God, Lord, I don't know what else to do, but just help me. And God showed up. That's a big testimony. And with that, you also testify that you know God is with you. Oh, what a, a, a blessed position to be. A position to know that God is with you. God is with us. It's not somebody telling you, you know, because you have seen God show up for you. Uh, so that's a powerful testimony. That's a great testimony. Now it's working more with that God that has shown up for you, shown up with you, that is the required. I noted a few points. Uh, in what you said, but I tell you this, what this testimony overshadows all the other things. Yeah, it overshadows all the other things. Uh, uh, let me just make mention of them so that after today, you just throw them away. So uh, the first one is 
the your effort versus your result the big disparity so effort is one result is one desired goal is uh, one so those are the three big things you mentioned yeah desired goals and effort and then result but the discouraging thing that's why i said after now you just throw it away you still need to do this other three is that you feel discouraged or you use the word it doesn't work that was your word that's why i say you throw those ones away because your testimony doesn't agree with that statement. Do you agree with me that your testimony doesn't agree with that statement? <laughs> well, <I don't... laughs> yes, sir. Okay. Yes. So, yes. yeah, but I'll just say something that will connect the three. Okay. So, your goal, big goals, which is good because I've always said we should set very big goals. Our God is big. In fact, not just big, it's infinitely big. There is no end to him. Effort, result, then wide gap between your effort and the result you get or the result and the desired goal that you have set. Now, we should never be discouraged. Let's read that Hebrews chapter 12 again for ourselves. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, whom, what? Can you read it for me, Brother Dara? Who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame. And he sat down at the right hand of the Father, of the, at the right hand of the throne of God. So he had a goal, right? But he had to endure a whole lot while walking towards that goal. And eventually he achieved it. That's why I kept saying that that word, discourage, because of the gap, should be thrown away. But now turn it around and then say, okay, what do I do? to close that gap. I'll just say two things now, and then another time we can look at the other. So certain goals that you set, you have to, uh, goals, uh, you, you move towards goals in steps. So yeah, you move toward goals in steps. Just note that, yeah? So if you are today, let's say at, a hundred thousand or fifty thousand. Let's use money. People like money. And you want to jump to one million. You must look at where you are today. Where you are today in terms of because after you make a plan, plan is not just setting vision. If you set goals, that's more like vision. Yeah. What are the steps that will take you there? So yeah. you look at where you are today and you know what you are doing that is bringing the 100,000 or 50,000. Now, what are the building blocks that you will put together and how does, do those building blocks translate to moving you from 1,000 to 1 million? So as I always tell, you, tell us that the what and the why needs to be supported by the how, the how, the steps. So when you put these steps, some you may be able to do, let's say you were able to fit all these steps in of the things you will do this year to move you straight. But that's a big jump, you know, to go from, if you go from 100,000 to 200,000, that's a 100% jump, right? Now think about going from 100,000 to 1 million, you know? That's like a thousand, right? Jump in terms of percentage. So it's a big jump. So this is sometimes um, what we need to do to break down that big jump, that big goal into smaller steps. But let that big goal be there to drive us. But you must also develop the ability to throw away any negative things like, oh, I look at the result and the goal, the gap is too wide. It doesn't work. Like I said, you yourself, you have seen that it works. God is with you. So 
that's point one. Point one is develop the building blocks, yeah? We call it staircase. Please note that word, write it down, staircase, yeah? Of building blocks. It's gotta be in steps. It's difficult for you to just jump from 100,000 to 1 million. So there must be steps of what are you going to add to the things you're doing now and what would that result be, okay? So number one is you build the staircase, you know, the building blocks of how you're gonna move. Then number two is that the, the small milestones that you have achieved, let that be the driving impetus. So just like the testimony you gave. So now take those small milestones and that hand of God you have seen and sit with God and say, what do I have to do? Let those small victories, small testimonies begin to drive you to do more rather than what you, you know, don't mix the two. You've got to start changing that language completely. And throw it away, as I kept saying, you've got to throw it away. The problem is not the gap. The problem is how much you focus on the little victories to enable you gain more understanding, energy, learning. So you then drive the staircases more. So maybe you have just done one or two staircases out of 20. And you've gotten, if you move from maybe 100,000 to 120, you've tried, but there are still 18 more to go. So instead of looking at it and say, ah, I can't do this, is to realize that, ah, God has helped me. Every time I was stuck, God came through. So that same God can actually show me what to do to expand these steps, to grow it, to enlarge it. So as you continue to do that, you begin to, one master this skill because it's God that teaches us skill. These things are skills and wisdom that God teaches. Yeah. And of course, you study the things that you need to do. So I, I don't want to bring all that mix here, but I assume that we have spoken before that that's clear. Study things that will help you understand what you need to do in the respective staircases. So those would be the two points, like I said, that's why I said that the others will do another time, which is like the things you need to start because that I need specific information to know what your challenges are. Then I can guide on the specific things that you need to do. But at least from these two points, I believe you can continue to walk your staircases and move forward. So break it down to smaller milestones and be able to translate what that milestone will add, will bring where it will take you through. And then use the successes of those milestones to gain the strength, the encouragement, the energy, the learning, and expand and enlarge and achieve more milestones. Okay. Brother Dara, any more? There are other questions, but I think this is very liberating. What you have just shared is very, very liberating for me because I, uh, from what you're just saying, maybe it's possible that I'm looking at people who are already at their, their, their 20th staircase and then I'm perhaps because we're in the same space, we're in the same industry, maybe I'm just using all of those to compare and then um, I've now lost appreciation of my own progress. I've, I've noted these things, I will review them and you know, work on them and probably also share with you. But this is Great. very, very depressing. Very depressing. Great. Yeah. Insightful. Thank you, sir. Yeah. You've just made one point that uh, I think we will take that outside here. Uh, comparison with other people. You know, this race we are running, everybody has its own lane. Eh? And uh, yes, there are things to learn from people and all that. But we are running our individual races. No, there is... We're not in competition with anybody, actually, in terms of what we achieve and where we are going. But we should, of course, learn from what people are doing. But let them not become our 
oh yeah, because they have done this, I too must do, or why am I not doing it? Okay, like I said, we just noted that I will take that on. Mm -hmm. And also, even in appreciating God, this is very powerful. Often we look at what God hasn't done for us. So please change and start looking at what God has done for you, what God has done for us. We Those call that, this we call this happiness project. <laughs> Finding every little thing to make you happy, whatever you have done. <laughs> great, great, mm. great. Without being complacent, eh? So long as that was your best effort. So long as you did put in your best effort. No, what I mean is that we should continue to drive on yes. and not uh, relent. Yeah, so yeah. great. Okay. okay, we'll leave it here, but please make effort. I think that's also the last word Sister Comfort has used, as long as that was your best effort. So effort is required. Little, 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 what put one step at a time, try something, do something about that thing, and you'll be amazed, and then take it to God, the God that has spoken to you, that helped you when you were stuck, he can open your understanding to know the strategy to apply and all that, take it to God. All right, brothers and sisters, God bless us.